jobs. And, and we were told that, well, we need to move them offshore because we've got unions that have become too powerful. These people are getting paid way more than they should be. And, and maybe that was true to some degree that they were, that the salaries had been negotiated up to a, a level that maybe wasn't sustainable, whatever. Now we're seeing that service jobs are going to be very quickly replaced by automation, by mm -hmm. robotics. Uh, we're looking at within just a few years, I believe, we're going to see the entire transportation industry, that, that entire service industry disappear. You know, there's all these fights going on with taxi drivers and uh, taxi uh, unions with Uber. And mm -hmm. yet the Uber CEO has said that he wants to see a situation in the future. And he's, he is paying uh, drivers at the moment to take people around in competition to the taxi drivers. But he wants to see a future where the dude in the car goes away because that dude in the car is what's making your ride expensive. And then he goes on to say, that he envisions a situation where we need to get over the idea that cars are hardware that are privately owned. We need to see these vehicles as part of the community. No, they're actually going to be vehicles that he owns. He's going to be the one who is Uber everything, right? This, this is a good example of consolidation, I think, because we're going to see taxi drivers as well as truck drivers, as well as delivery people. That's all going to go away with these computer-driven cars. That's coming in the future, but tomorrow and right around the corner, you're going to see even greater losses in minimum wage jobs. The majority of people who work for minimum wage or less than minimum wage are in the food service industry. Mm -hmm. And those jobs are being replaced as we speak by touch screens, by uh, tablets, by other ways of ordering food that don't involve human beings. The pattern here should be pretty obvious. And for the folks who say, well, you know, we couldn't have, uh, we couldn't have paid people more and those damn unions uh, ruined all this for us. You know, after 30 years of, of union jobs disappearing and people going on food stamps and finding themselves unemployed, I just got to ask, how'd that work out for us? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I guess really part of the reason that this war has worked initially is that when you go to a place like China and people see an increase in their standard of living, even though their standard of living is still abysmally poor, many people in China were seeing their standard of living going up by 20, 30, 40 percent, and that made them feel somewhat happy about that, and they felt they were making progress, let's put it that way. Although mm -hmm. you do have people committing suicide now in these factories, sewing notes into clothing, saying, you know, help <laughs> yeah. us. I mean, you know, there's that side of it. But there is also a side of some of these people, they believe that they're making economic progress. However, in America, we see just the opposite, and we're going to be seeing that all throughout Western countries. We're going to be seeing just the opposite. We're going to be seeing people whose standards of, of living are being dropped by 20%, 30%, 40%, maybe disappearing altogether as their jobs disappear. And I, I think that this, uh, we, we've thought of this uh, transportation industry thing as being maybe 10 mm -hmm. years out, 20 years out. Now they're talking about, Google is talking about it being three to five years out. Wow. They were saying at the beginning of the year, they had solved, essentially, they believe, the technical issues, and we can talk about that, you know, the blue screen of death if your computer crashes. <laughs> but, you know, they think that they have solved the uh, technical issues. So the beginning of the year, they said what was remaining were legal issues. And about April, we saw the European Union as well as California saying that starting in just the next few months, they're going to allow these self-driving cars to be operated without somebody at the wheel ready to take the wheel. So they're moving the legal issues out of the way, and they're ready to start rolling this out quite literally. The patterns are very, very clear for anyone who, who wants to take a look at them. You know, it, it's funny because when I tried to sell this book, Ghosts of Tom Joe, to the publishers uh, in New York City, which is where most of the book publishing industry is located, I couldn't get a foot in the door. What do you mean there's poor people in America? What do you mean that there's people somewhere in between New York and, and L.A. who are, are forced to work two or three jobs just to, just to hold a life together? What are you talking about? We don't see that. We don't know anything about that. The very first publisher I approached outside of New York, uh, a group of, of people in uh, Indiana, Indiana um, said, we want this book. We've been waiting for someone to come along and tell these stories. And I find the very same thing happens now when I speak to people around the country. I have to kind of check myself. And when I'm in the, when I'm on the East Coast, I'm in Boston or New York talking about this, I, I find that I have to stop and explain some of these terms. 
And when I speak outside of these big cities, I find that I have to instead say, do you know that people in New York don't know who you are? Yeah. And yeah. don't know how you live. And, and, and so, don't care. And, and, and care. probably really, yeah. really don't care. Politicians will, will show up in our small towns once every four years, promise new jobs, promise job training, promise to fix things up, wash their hands in, in Purell, and then get out of town before something sticks to them. Or we see some politician like Hillary Clinton, for example, talking oh. about the 99% when she has a half a billion dollars given to her foundation by Goldman Sachs. They're holding fundraisers in Goldman Sachs offices. She's getting a quarter of a million dollars for a speech at a university and the students are saying, what's going on? What's wrong with this? We're going to be right back with Peter Van Buren. His book is Ghosts of Tom Joad, a story of the 99%. And I want to talk to you a little bit more about the setting and the time setting of this book. And we'll be right back with Peter Van Buren. Stay with us. Brought to you by InfidelBodyArmor.com. When it hits the fan, don't be left without the body armor that will save your life. With prices starting at just $374.99 and ships free. Get yours at InfidelBodyArmor.com. Just won't quit. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. You've talked about it for a while. Now it's time to get your family the emergency readiness pack it deserves. And there's one site to turn to, TopPackGear.com. From large to small, you'll find kits for every purpose, and all of them can be customized by you. TopPackGear.com offers the best pre-built packs the Internet has to offer. Assembled using only high-quality products vetted by pros and chosen for the best balance of quality and value. Prepare, endure, prevail with TopPackGear.com. Every business owner knows how tough it is to get financing for their business. Whether the cash is needed for expansion, repairs, or growth, when you need financing, you need a reliable source. Banks are happy to hold your deposits, but don't bother to ask them for a business loan. For 10 years, Merchant Capital Source has been helping small businesses just like yours get the money they need. If your business needs as much as $250,000, Merchant Capital Source can deliver in as little as three to five days, even if you have poor credit. If you've been in business for six months and produce at least $15,000 in monthly sales, there's a good chance you'll qualify. At Talk About Hassle Free, we don't need to see your tax returns, financial statements, or business plans. Rated A-plus by the Better Business Bureau. Join the thousands of business owners who've learned the secret of using Merchant Capital Source to meet their capital needs. Log on to mccash.com right now for a free quote. That's mccash.com or call 800-296-0772. That's 800-296-0772. 800-296-0772. It's been said, those who control the food, control the people. Are you concerned about GMO foods making you sick and affecting your mind? Many people suffer from lack of energy, insomnia, loss of stamina, weight gain, and the inability to think clearly. Genetically modified crops, processed foods, and toxic chemicals can compromise your health and are silently destroying your digestive system, which accounts for 80% of your immune system. Take back control of your health with Pro-EM1 Probiotic from Terraganics. Pro-EM1 Probiotic helps protect your body against irritable bowel syndrome, constipation, Crohn's disease, celiac disease, diabetes, the common cold, and much more. And including a powerful probiotic like Pro-EM1 as part of your daily routine puts you back in control and prevents you from becoming a mindless zombie manipulated by the pharmaceutical and GMO agendas. Call Terraganics at 866-369-3678 or visit Terraganics.com. T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I've just been talking to Peter Van Buren, the author of a new book, Ghosts of Tom Joad, the story of the 99%. And just before we went to the break, I was talking about that uh, phony champion of the 99%, Hillary Clinton. Uh, Peter, you used to work for her at the State Department, didn't you? Uh, work uh, <laughs> under her, we'll, we'll say. There we go, um, yeah. I, I worked at a fairly low level at the State Department and for most of my career had little contact with the Secretary of State's office. However, once I wrote my whistleblowing book, We Meant Well, about the war in Iraq, it was uh, Mrs. Clinton's staff that 
ran the campaign to to push me out of oh. the State Department. Uh, in particular, one of her uh, deputies slash henchmen uh, is a name that many of your listeners either are familiar with or should be familiar with, Pat Kennedy. Oh. Pat Kennedy's name was on the 2007 report from Iraq uh, exonerating Blackwater from any uh, <laughs> misdealings. Pat Kennedy was the lead person explaining why Hillary Clinton was not guilty of anything over the Benghazi disaster. Oh, and Pat yeah. Kennedy was the person who signed off on all of the attempts to persecute and prosecute me at the Department of State. He's a bureaucrat. He's a person that doesn't appear uh, in public very often. But as the Hillary campaign cranks up um, and the uh, documentaries uh, Triumph of, of Hillary's Will are released, keep an eye out for that name. You'll oh, be yeah. surprised where it pops up. Yeah, I'll just refer people to that James Risen story that we were talking about from the New York Times yes. on Sunday about Blackwater and what we were talking about in the first part of the interview. People can check out his credentials and his credibility by learning what really went on with Blackwater in Iraq as that's coming out now. Peter, tell us a little bit about your book. Uh, now, you said it starts in the 1950s and goes forward. It's a, a fictional account that really is kind of a more of a, it's not a uh, an economics text. It's not a political text. You're not going through metrics. You're really going through the kind of visceral experience that people are going through as America is, as I said before, approaching bankruptcy first gradually, and then we're afraid maybe now suddenly. Does it go further into the future from where we are? Or is it coming up to the present? It takes us right up till till today, mm -hmm. and it it is based on we it, it's fiction in the sense that I've put this story all in in one family to to make it easier to read and, and a little more uh, comfortable of, of a story, because economics at the end of the day is not about numbers it's it's about people, and just like my book about Iraq that I I lived. I, this story itself uh, touches my, my own life and I'm sure the lives of, of many others. I grew up in the Rust Belt in Ohio. I saw firsthand the, the loss of jobs, the factory closings. Um, I was able to leave uh, that area and get a job with the State Department, but when I came back, as a 54-year-old, um, out of work at the State Department, I went back into the minimum wage uh, economy and saw firsthand how this is all working now. I spoke with uh, an endless number of people who were in the same situation and then went back to the Midwest and spent most of the summer traveling there, talking with folks, spent some time living out of my car, and came to understand what was happening to our own selves, our, our own people, Americans, who were abandoned by their government, who were left aside by a very few hyper-wealthy people, who saw them not as human beings, but essentially the same way that people would look at, at animals or cattle or, or farm animals, a, a quantity that needed to be kept fed for what they were going to do, and then when they were no longer necessary, pushed aside. Yes, uh, it was just uh, Senator Jeff Sessions just recently said, you're treating people like commodities. And yes. that's essentially what, what you're saying. I'm reminded you're talking about how difficult it was for you after your experiences uh, of being pushed out of the State Department. I'm reminded of Thomas Drake, who wound yes. up blowing the whistle at the NSA and then becoming an Apple genius to try to make ends meet. Again, that book is The Ghost of Tom Joe, the story of the 99%. Peter Van Buren. Go to his website, wemintwell.com. Alex Jones will be with us tomorrow. Check out the nightly news tonight at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. You can find that at prisonplanet.tv. Thank you, Peter. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and